and welcome to this week's Artist on Art. I am your host, Nada Milkovich. I have the great pleasure of speaking with Matthew Swinnerton. Matthew, thanks for coming in. Ooh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's exciting. Well, it's live, baby. <laughs> well, this is like an iconic chair. Like All my friends and people I've looked up to sat here, so I'm, I feel like I don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> no, you very much belong. Thank you. Matthew is a local treasure of ours. He is um, an artist, a photographer, and also a community builder, I would say. You um, have done some tremendous things here in town, and uh, we are very lucky to have you here. One of the, the big accomplishments, and uh, it's a great accomplishment, is Matthew is a part of the creative team that began tech raising yeah and uh i've had the pleasure of speaking with several of uh, your compatriots uh margaret rosas and andrew mueller the three of you have been doing tech raising now three years we did in 2010 we did actually 2011 we had one and then 2012 we had two And in October, we'll have our third. And for our dear audience that doesn't quite know what tech raising is, would you mind describing it a little bit for us? Yeah, it's a a great event. Basically, on Friday, people come together, designers, web developers, engineers, business development people. They get together and they pitch ideas for like a web app, a service, some, some tech thing that they do. And then teams start forming around those ideas. And basically, for 48 hours, they work on those ideas. And at the end of the 48 hours, they demo an actual business-like project that they can go to the market with. So it's pretty cool. And you've had some, some success stories come out of tech raising. Yeah, we've had quite a few. Um, you know, and I, I think there's success stories, but there's also just the collaboration of people getting together. You know, I mean, sometimes it almost gets overshadowed by like all the great stuff and people have got funded and that stuff. But I think just the connections that people have made um, just today I was talking to uh, the digital signage factory that they met a VC there. And yeah, so a project didn't actually happen, but something's working where, you know, to, I guess, a networking thing for their company. And the digital signage is out of the uh, digital media factory, is that uh, right? They work next to them, yeah. Uh, and they, I guess they, they do a co-branding of some sort. I but, see, yeah. I see. And I, I also think that's what's really interesting about tech raising. Matthew is... Um, for instance, one of my uh, one of my friends that I work with, she was approached by somebody who had a, a business idea. Um, he wanted to set up a website. He wanted to get going on it, but he didn't really have uh, all the elements that are needed to put together a successful website that will actually get you to where you're wanting to go and so what she did tech raising was actually happening like that weekend and she's like you know why don't we first do this let's go through tech raising together figure out you know crystallize your business idea what what is the app that that they were thinking of um get all the elements together uh, and then start working on the website you know and that's all it takes is an idea and we had a lady from the library that came one year, and she had no idea what she even needed. She had just this a, a vague idea of what she wanted to do, and everybody loved the idea. And then just a whole team formed around her, and they did these like QRS codes all around the city, and you know, gave little expre- you know, little stories about th- what this building was or what this you know what this um, you know team that did something was, and. Um, People loved it, and it was a great project. And QRS are the squiggly little black and white yeah. thingies that you you find. Um, and what you can do is basically with a smartphone, uh, have a reader that will then lead you to the link. That, exactly that to, to whatever no, whatever website that they want you to go. A lot of companies are using it for branding now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see it as a really great way for possibly uh, linking to augmented reality. So not only would you yeah. be able to see the building, but also get text next to it about the history of that building or whatever. I mean, it's opened up a whole other kind of businesses that people and people. That's all they do is make those codes, and they make really cool looking ones. And so um, it's a whole industry that just came about. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Matthew Swinnerton, would you mind just telling us a little bit about how did you and Andrew and Margaret get together and come up with tech raising? It dep- 
depends who you're talking to. Well, I'm talking <laughs> yeah, to you. <laughs> we, we all have uh, our own versions of it. But basically, I wanted to do something, a complete different thing I wanted to do, um, where people got together and already had a finished product and people competed. And so I told Andrew, I said, let's, have, let's go to like the Del Mar and have a night of it. We'll make it a big special night and have a competition with a panel. He said, I have a better idea. Let's do like a weekend where they build. I said, okay. So <laughs> he convinced me. He's really good at, I have an idea. He's always good at having like one idea better than me. Uh, <laughs> taking your idea. Exactly. And, and running with augmenting it. Augmenting yeah. it. So he was actually going to have lunch with uh, Margaret in about you know, 20 minutes after that conversation. So I said, talk to her. And actually, I just um, saw her at the New Tech Meetup. She gave a talk. And so um, from that, we just did it. And a month later, we had one. And there are some similar type events around Silicon Valley and the Bay Area and probably the rest of the there's, United States. There, yeah, there's like startup weekends and there's hackathons. I think what's different than ours is that it's not a competition. We're not competing against each other, but we actually have this tech raising coin that we give out to people. Everybody gets a coin, and if somebody helped you, you give them your coin for you know, that you helped contribute to their project. And whoever has the most coins at the end, they win. Oh, yeah. So who it's not on the, the project. Helpful. Yeah, it's just, it's about collaboration. I mean, uh, that's the whole the whole weekend's about. And you also have mentors that come in and 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 lead workshops, yeah. uh, skill building. Uh, um, what are the elements of a of a successful business idea, business app idea, that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, we have them you know roving around throughout the weekend. Um, you know, at different times. I mean, at any given point, we have a couple of mentors that are just you know talking to the people and helping them out, and that's crucial for their business. I mean, some people like we talked about the library lady or other people. They have no idea how to, you know, where to go next, and so, or even if it's a biz dev idea or some engineering issue, um, they point in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tech raising, October 2013 will yes. be the next one. Yes. Now you had was it the past October 2012? Correct. You had, um, and all of these take place at Cruise IO. Yeah, yeah. And you feed very well the yeah. the, the participants. That's my job, is yeah. feeding people. Yes, yeah. and you feed them locally. Yeah, we tried. It, that's just the fun part about it. You know, it just adds another element. But like, they get good food. I mean, we had got, um, surf rider out there cooking food outside, and it just it's food is people. I mean, Food makes people happy. I yeah, think. and it helps bring them together. Exactly. When you yeah. break bread. That- exactly. Especially when they haven't slept. You know, it's like two in the morning or something. I'm passing out food, or um, it just it's a joyous occasion always. And oh, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. So the last tech raising that you had, um, there was a idea uh, that you kind of uh, pushed. Uh, um, tell us about it. Well, I. I I always felt bad because I was looking at all these cool things being made at Tech Raising, and you know I facil- you know, helped facilitate that with you know Margaret and Andrew and all our geek sitters, um, but I couldn't do anything. And Margaret and me were like, we want to do something this time, and so um, I had this idea of a magazine for a while. I said, but the only way I would like to do it is if I had Studio Holiday. Um, they're great designers here in town, and Eric um, Eric Johnson is the editor. I said, if I can get those two guys to do it then I'll make this magazine. If not, um, it's not worth doing. I just wanted to make a beautiful looking magazine. So um, I went to Eric first and I talked to him and he refined my ideas. He's kind of like my Andrew as well. It's like, okay, let's let's do it a little bit like this and came up with the the name of the magazine. And um, then we went over to Ted and his group and they loved it. And so we started working on it about three weeks before Tech Raising, but we actually designed it and put it all together in 48 hours, which is kind of unheard of or a magazine 48 hours we put a whole t- magazine together so and it turned out really well it's a beautiful magazine Thank folks you. uh it's um it's also available on ipads or or smart tablets yeah. kind of thing yeah so if you go to our website go to instantsantacruz.com um there's a link and you can print on demand so we didn't actually the first run we didn't print our own copies but you can actually go onto our website and order one in a week it'll be sent to you and that's uh, through MagCloud? Yeah. HP has a division called MagCloud, and um, it's a print-on-demand service. So it's great that people can just create magazines. I mean, anybody can go on that website. And you know, if they have some design skills, make a magazine. And um, So print-on-demand, and then also it's digital, so you can go on your iPad, on your computer, on your Kindle, whatever you want. Yeah. And so that's... Uh 
the name Instant Magazine, uh, not only is it because you can order it instantly kind of thing, but you uh, wanted to create a magazine around an event. Yeah, that, that's how it started. So with Tech Raising, basically an hour after Tech Raising was over, people were able to buy the magazine. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't like after that. And we covered a big portion of the magazine. Actually, during the demos of Tech Raising, we were still working on it. <laughs> Actually, so we were in the very last minute. So an hour after Tech Raising, you know, everybody was able to order it. So after that happened, we said, you know what, that, that was, we enjoyed doing that. And this is different. And who actually covers an event and then a magazine could be you know, created you know, right away and then ready to download? Um, you don't, I, we haven't seen any that do that in companies. No. So, so we started, we, thinking about doing a, we thought about doing a business on that where we actually, we can go to events and we can cover their events for them. A lot of times if you go to a big conference, they'll have a magazine, but it's like a pre-done, already, you know, you know old interviews and things said. Um, this is actually about the event you're at and then you can go to. So that's our um, instantpublishinggroup.com is our website for that. And this, uh, this magazine was available at the Bookshop Santa Cruz. Um, yeah, but, and then Carmen Marks, and there's a couple of locations in Santa Cruz. Um, this there time were we're some push- printed, yeah. Yeah, so we did actually print some. Um, they were costly to print, so we did a limited run. Uh, but this time, we're actually going to have them printed on a larger scale so we can get them out to the market easier. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so uh, the second Instant Magazine, yes. the second issue, is coming out. Yep, at the end of the month. At the January 31st. Correct. Now, I understand that uh, Instant Magazine is looking for sponsors. Yes, we, d- we, d- we need sponsors. And it, you. if you want to be uh, a sponsor that is in the magazine, they need to get a hold of you by next Friday, January Correct. 25th. Yeah. So that and they make it into the January 31st. Correct, yeah. And it's actually a beautifully done ad. If you, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but Studio Holiday does all the sponsored pages. So they just look beautiful. It's not like a normal ad, but it's fully designed by Studio Holiday. It's a black and white look that we have... Um, Got all of our sponsors do. It's in the middle of the book. And what's nice is people actually want to go look at the sponsored ad pages. <laughs> yeah, we, we found in a lot of different magazines, um, art magazines that had this style. And um, Studio Holiday came up with a, a little bit different version of it. And it looks beautiful. And, and again, folks, uh, what this magazine did was run around. You guys were running around during tech raising, taking pictures, doing interviews, uh, writing up the text, um, uh, creating the the images um, so that by the end of Sunday afternoon, um, two hours later, after at yeah. eight o'clock Sunday evening, it was ready. It, it was ready for everybody that was so the participant or yeah. those of us such as myself who sadly couldn't make it to the weekend due to previous yeah. engagements. Yeah. But not this year. Not to, ooh, <laughs> looking forward to you to come. We heard you got an idea. <laughs> I got, I got an idea. Yeah. I got a million ideas. Awesome. <laughs> but um, the next instant magazine, the second instant magazine, will be for an event that just happened at yes. our Santa Cruz Mall. Yes. And what was that? Um, so Zay Frank came, and um, I'm not sure if everybody knows who Zay Frank is. He's an internet sensation. He'd like. It's the, the father of viral videos. He you know, did that before the internet was even around. I mean, not really that long far, but before a lot of people were even accustomed to the internet. And um, he wanted to connect with a museum that had some participation involved in it. And Nina was, everybody said, Nina all his Simon. friends, yeah, said, you got to talk to this lady. And so he talked to her and um, they had a whole weekend event where people come together. He had like games that was running throughout the museum, um, exhibits. He had presentations. Um, there was an artist that gave a little demonstration, a workshop on how he does these monsters that were really cool. And so it was just a fun, I think there was like 700 people that were there. They were just the whole weekend just had a great time. And once again, Instant Magazine was running around, taking pictures, doing interviews with people at the event. Yes. And yeah. for us, again, those who weren't in town, such as myself, <laughs> you can't leave this place. There's it's always like, something. There's always <laughs> something. There's something to miss. Um, we'll be able to see uh, a, a compressed version of, of what happened a compressed version, but a very long version. We actually took a, we we did a lot. We covered I think it was it's going to be twelve thirteen pages, and it was like five thousand words or something. It's 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 a pretty long 
Yeah, um, you know, we just we enjoyed ourselves so much. We think there was so much going on that weekend that we really took a lot of time covering it. Yeah. So you're listening to uh, Matthew Swinnerton. He is on Artist on Art. This is going to be the last evening of Artist on Art. I will be doing a new time next quarter. Uh, the Artist on Art will be on Mondays from one to two p.m. Uh, and so. Uh, Thanks for coming up here, Matthew. Thank you. This last night, um, some of the people we wanted to mention uh, that are involved with Instant Magazine is, again, Ted Holliday, who is the creative director uh, that you mentioned, and Eric Johnson, the editor. Uh, but uh, there's also Conrad Altman and Eric Zwierzynski. Right. who are uh, a big part of, of the Instant Magazine and, and on the second issue, I'm assuming. Yeah, as no, well. they are. And then we also have our other writers and we have our photographers. Um, we had quite Jory Hendricks, we had Julia Sims, and um, Adam, I can't remember his last name. Um, we have a bunch of other writers and, and um, contributors. Contributors. So we're very thankful for them. And all of these, uh, if you want to be involved or, or want to see more about it, you can go to instantsantacruz.com. You can also go to instantpublishinggroup.com. And another, uh, well, and techraising.com. Uh, another, uh, let's say, um, project. Another, a project <laughs> that Matthew Swinnerton is working on is something called interrogationhub.com. Uh, well, the name of the or it's called Interrogation Hub, but you can go to interrogationhub.com, and there you will see interviews. Is that right? Yeah, I've always been. I just think it's it's amazing how I love entrepreneurism. I love how you can come up with an idea, and then it's like make a business card, and basically you have a business. You know, go buy a lawnmower, you have a business. So I wanted to interview in, um, entrepreneurs that fascinated me. So. Um, I did it three months ago, and it's just amazing to read these you know, articles. I have one article from um, Smug Mug, the owner of Smug Mug, Chris Maskill, and he um, talks about how he was was homeless and you know just had a terrible you know, growing up situation with his family that ha- his mother had a um, a lot of medical conditions, mental conditions, and he got through that and started working with Steve Jobs and. Now he's the CEO of his own company. So I love to see the progression of people, how they get from one point to the other, um, you know, how do they built that business. So um, it's been really enjoyable, and we have a lot of good interviews coming up soon. And so how many people have you been able to interview in three months? I think months? I have like about 17. Wow. Yeah, or so. So I try to do like you know, one, or, one or two a week. Um, I've been at like one right now. But um, yeah, just if I find somebody interesting... I try to interview them. And are they mostly local Santa Cruzians? I would say about 75%. Yeah. Yeah. But, or sometimes over the, you know, in Silicon Valley. Right. But I, I try to have a Santa Cruz touch to it. Right. Yeah. Now, you're, you've been here for quite a while. You've got your family living here and stuff. You, but you're originally from Southern California. Yes. And that's where you got your artistic... Uh, environment your your family uh, your so. parents are, yeah. are artists my, my my father is an amazing oil painter got my mom can draw and you know they're just they're very well educated smart people and um i think the the apple fell far from the tree <laughs> <There's> no. <something. laughs> but okay, yeah so you know i've always been around artistic people and you know they were they were you no know, he had a long beard got, you know she had glasses they looked like john lennon and yoko ono you know so coming from that hippie like culture i think i did take a lot from that i love communities you know they were they were in communes and stuff and um i enjoyed a lot of aspects of that culture so i think that has probably come across in my my daily life but it also helped you um get your foundation as an artist as a photographer yeah i think because i wanted to find an outlet somewhere and i couldn't draw i couldn't paint but um I picked up a camera one time and I loved it. So I've I've never gone back. I I, I could be in a dark room, you know, for for days if someone let me. Right. So, yeah. Right. If someone paid you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or not sometimes, but yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you you mentioned before the interview that um, you didn't you didn't you, you actually work as a salesperson. Is that right? Yeah. Or? I've always done sales. Um, very far away from being an artist, I feel, in, in some way. But um, I didn't want to do photography as my career because I loved it so much as a hobby. I didn't want to take away from that. Um, but what makes me feel better is I was reading a book by Seth Godin we talked about earlier about how he says, you know, a lot of times it's if we create something and it touches someone, that's art. 
So, you know, I feel that same way with entrepreneurism. You know, if we create something, if we create, you know, I like to do community events and other things, and people are affected by it. I feel like that's a, a form of art. Oh, so, yeah. most certainly, yeah. especially today in contemporary uh, art world where conceptual art reigns supreme yeah. and um, community building, uh, site specific type art projects, uh, tech raising. If you want to call it art, then it's art. Yeah, uh, well, yeah you know, I, I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had something else you wanted to mention uh, that's coming up in at the end of the month? No, it's actually um, this Monday, January 21st. Um, Chris Gillibu, he's the author of The $100 Startup and The Art of Nonconformity. So, you know, he's a big blogger and number one you know, selling author. He's going to be at Cruzio, um 6 o'clock. And this is a humongous event. It's going to be already, we already have 300 and... 25 people there coming or wow. registered. Um, if you want to register, $100startup.com. Um, he's going to talk about his book and he's going to talk about how he started his entrepreneur you know, life and you know, how he started from you know, selling out eBay to going to Africa for four years and, then, um, and now doing what he's doing now. So um, we're really fortunate to have him come. And is this something that you uh, brought together with Cruzio or... No, well, they're sponsoring it. They're so supportive of a lot of things that I do. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, they just have a beautiful space. They have, you know, the internet. There's everything we need for a great event. So um, that's why I utilize them, and they they um, they let me do it. So um, I just wanted him to come, so I, I asked him to. Oh, you invited him. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's on a, a miniature book tour right now, and so he asked for, you know, who would want, you know, what city did you know to come, and he said yes. Okay, so uh, $100 startup. Yeah, exactly. $100, $100startup.com. Dot com. And that's where you'd be able to register if yes. you'd like to see um, him speak. You can also just come. Yeah, um, it's 6 o'clock, Cruzeo, on January 21st. This Monday, folks. Yes, yeah. And also next week, January 31st. No. Two weeks, sorry about that. Yeah, in two weeks. In two weeks, the second issue of Instant Magazine will be hitting the uh, the stands, the virtual the, stands. The, the stand, the internet, the wherever, <laughs> yeah, wherever. Yeah, just yeah. go to instantpublishinggroup.com. You can also sign up for our newsletter there, and we'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Oh, there you go. That's the best way to do it, instantpublishinggroup.com. If you want to see what the first issue looked like, and I highly recommend it, uh, you can go directly to instantsantacruz.com, which is where you'd be able to order it if you want to print. Yep. Um, and that's, again, through HP Mag. Yes, cloud. Mad cloud, yeah. And then uh, you can also um, download the digital version if you have a, a tablet or a smart, uh, excuse me, an iPad. You'll be able to, to, to have it that way. Or just walk over to Bookshop Santa Cruz. Oh, they still have some? Yep. I, I checked the other day. I'd it's, it's, it's on the, the top section right next to the cashier. <laughs> I, I look there. I go there like every other day to look at it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And this was a, a magazine that was spearheaded by Matthew Swinnerton and uh, helped along with uh, Ted Holliday in the Holiday Studio and Eric Johnson as the editor, who are also both, um, Ted is a, the creative director and uh, Eric is the editor for the second Yes. No. Yeah. Go ahead. We we're no three three together. We work on the magazine together. So we say we're co-founders. Co-founders, yeah. and yeah. all three of you are on the second edition yeah. of yeah. of uh, Instant Magazine. Yeah. It's a beautiful magazine. Uh, Ted does such beautiful work. Um, he is uh, truly a talented um, designer. Like I said, I wouldn't have done it without him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And then if you uh, like what you're hearing and want to be one of the Instant Magazine sponsors, if you get a hold of Matthew by the end of this week. Yes. Um, or go to uh, Instant well, Thursday, so the end of next publisher, week. instantpublishergroup.com. Um, you need to get to them by January 25th. Correct. And then you'll be able to be on the beautiful sponsors page of uh, the second issue of Instant Magazine, uh, which hopefully will continue uh, as events occur to cover them and, and, and continue making... We plan to do it every quarter, so... 
So yeah. whatever event is happening nearest... The we try to find an event that's happening around that time. Yeah. yeah. So we get pretty close to every quarter. There's always an event in Santa Cruz. Right. Yeah. Especially with the Santa Cruz Ma and Nina Simon and all of the, the good that's happening there. And that is actually our next event is another thing that's happening at the Ma, but it's kind of secret. So. Oh, it's a yeah. teaser. Yes. Well, hopefully you'll come back on, Matthew, and uh, tell us all <laughs> about it when, when we can hear about it. Will do. Um, and uh, so, there you go, Matthew Swinnerton. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you, um, Nada. This was awesome.